Well, hey, AP Bio, hope you're doing well when you watch this video. Uh, this video is going to be about uh, topic 6.7 on AP Classroom, mutations. And when I think of mutations, I, I definitely think about TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a game on the old Sega Genesis, and it was, it was a good time. And their origin story, of course, like they were in some sort of um, glass container, and they got knocked into radioactive goop. I think it also is related to the Daredevil's origin story. I could be wrong about that, but... Nonetheless, it is, you know, radioactive goop led to mutations and then it led to a difference in their phenotype, which is what, you know, physically looks like. And so mutations, yeah, they can definitely gain some functions for us. Maybe not on those levels, but, but let's go ahead and dive into exactly what mutations are. Um, these are the enduring understandings and LO's learning objectives from AP Classroom. So you can see differences in the expression of genes account for some of the phenotypic differences between organisms. So this learning objective is describe the various aspects of mutation. And so how can mutations lead to a change in phenotype? Of course, starting with genotype. So the function and amount of gene products determine the phenotype of organisms. Disruptions in genes and gene products cause new phenotypes. So alterations in a DNA sequence, mutations, hence, hence mutations, can lead to changes in the type or amount of protein produced and obviously change the phenotype. DNA mutations can be positive, negative, neutral, based on the effect or lack of effect they have on resulting nucleic acid or protein synthesis. This is part two. Um, explain how changes in genotype may result in changes in phenotype. So errors in replication or DNA repl uh, repair mechanisms. Also external factors, which we're gonna dive into in this lecture, all those mutations can lead to changes. Um, errors in mitosis or meiosis can also lead to changes. We talked about non-disjunction already and how changes in chromosome number often result in human disorders like with, development, uh, with developmental limitations, including like Down syndrome, trisomy 21, um, which is trisomy 21, Turner syndrome, etc. Klinefelter. Explain how alterations in DNA sequences contribute to the variation that can be subject to natural selection. Of course, you know, one of the big themes is life changes through time. So changes in genotype may also affect phenotypes that are subject to natural selection. Survival of the fittest, and we haven't talked about evolution yet, but from introductory biology, survival of the fittest, think, you know, if you have an advantage, you have a more likely a chance to survive and pass that uh, genes on, those successful genes on for the environment that you live in. Them. Genetic changes can, that enhance survival and reproduction can be selected for by environmental conditions. Okay, so the horizontal acquisitions, conjugation, and transposition um, increased variation in prokaryotes. Related viruses can also recombine or combine genetic information. They affect the same host cell reproduction processes that increase genetic variation are evolutionary conserved, which means we want to keep them because they are successful. So mutations are, so what are mutations? Changes in the nucleotide sequence. So these are your A, T, Cs, and Gs. So this, these are your nucleotide, let's change the color here. Nucleotide sequences in DNA and they're passed on from one cell of, or organism to another. Mutations occur a variety of processes, including replication errors, we talked about DNA replication, and the ones that are, of course, not corrected by repair mechanisms. So there's different types of mutations. Somatic mutations happen in body cells. And so these are mutations that pass on by mitosis, but doesn't go to your offspring. Germline mutations are, are arise in gametes. And these are passed on to new organisms at fertilization. So these can, you know, these are passed on. Mutations may or may not. So just because you have a mutation, it's a, a common misconception. When someone, you know, says mutations in real biology, well, Max, I think it's bad. And that's not the case. Um, it may not affect the phenotype at all. Lots of mutations are neutral. It doesn't have any effect. Some mutations are positive, which means there is a gain of function. But... It doesn't mean just everything is bad. Silent mutations do not affect protein function, hence silent. Don't even know you have them because protein still works. Loss of function mutations prevent gene transcription or produce non-functional proteins. This is like cystic fibrosis. We've lost the ability to do our job. That's a problem. Nearly always recessive. Not all, you know, some do sometimes dominant, but nearly always recessive. Gain of function mutations, these can lead to a protein with an altered function, okay? Um, something's different in the protein. So here's just an image from another textbook I have. Normal protein, silent mutation is the same protein, it's still functional. Loss of function, the protein has is no longer doing what it's supposed to do. You can see like the active site, this is an active site of an enzyme. The active site is blocked. 
You can see the gain function here, and now we have different active sites. We have different things we're doing, so that could be good or bad. An example of that, like I already said, CF, cystic fibrosis, recessive allele, you know, two carriers have kids, um, CF carrier, CF carrier has CF, again, Mendelian genetics, mutations in the CFTR gene cause cystic fibrosis. There's like thousands of different mutations that can cause this. Um, environmental conditions can affect the severity of it. So gain of function mutations can lead to increased activity of certain protein and tissues that, which normally express it. So an example of this could be Down syndrome, right? You have 321s. So we have a higher gene dosage. And so therefore we have different activity of proteins. Um, examples also include hemoglobin KIMC, a mutant hemoglobin with such high oxygen affinity that it does not release it. That's of course a, would be a problem. Um, sometimes there's conditional mutations, which de uh, depend upon the environment, like um, these rabbits right here. Example, you know, point restriction, coat color in rabbits and cats. That is a conditional mutation. A point mutation is results from the gain, loss, or substitution of a single. I would underline that word single. So at one point, you have a substitution of a single nucleotide can arise from replication errors or be caused by environmental mutagens, which cause can, you know, can cause mutations, radiation, certain chemicals, etc. And so we need to understand the different types of mutations. So the first one we already talked about a little bit, means point mutations may alter the amino acid sequence. So one change, a single nucleotide, and we're going to alter the amino acid sequence. It could do that. And so a perfect example of this is sickle cell. Sickle cell is one place that it differs. And so sickle cell definitely in one place it differs and it leads to that change in amino acid sequence, which of course leads to hemoglobin and the red blood cells collapsing on themselves under low oxygen conditions, which leads to a lot of problems as you can imagine. Point mutations may result in proteins that are less efficient, but maintain enough function that phenotype is not changed. But like we already said, amino acid substitutions may not affect protein function at all. So that is a silent mutation. For example, we talked about P53, the human gene TP53 encodes P53. A gain of function causes the protein to promote the cell cycle and prevent cell death. It has a gain of oncogenic, which is the beginning of cancer function. So point mutation there, gain of function, that's a bad thing. So let's review, before we dive into the rest of this, let's review the central dogma of biology. Basically DNA leads to RNA and RNA leads to protein. So DNA can be replicated draw the circle correctly. And then through transcription, I like to think of like a scribe writes. A scribe writes, and we're changing the language from DNA into RNA. They're, of course, the famous pizza cookbook analogy that many science teachers have done over the years. Um, we're trying to make a pizza, which is our protein. We have it a cookbook in Italian. We need it in English, so we've got to change the language. And so transcription is that DNA into RNA. RNA then is translated. We read the code in RNA, translate it into protein okay and so why do we need to review that really briefly is because uh you know substitutions and point mutations and mutations in general can change the code which can change rna which can possibly not always but possibly lead to changes in the protein so the first and least harmful type is substitutions substitutions only affect one single triplet so in the code read in letters of three and so it only affects one place um, so sometimes it's a, there's three different outcomes. Sometimes there's a nonsense. Um, so many jokes right here. This is all nonsense. Let's not, let's not dive into those. But the amino acid that should have been coded for is changed to a stop code and the protein terminates. Of course, this would lead to a useless protein. So there's a stop codon. There's different codons when you're translating from an RNA. And so every three layers, but some actually tell the ribosome to stop making the protein stop. And so this is nonsense, which of course is, it leads to a useless protein. Missense is a change in nucleotide that leads for a different amino acid. So a different amino acid could have huge different, you know, a huge effect. It could have a little effect. Um, it's all about how the protein folds, right? Form leads to function, of course. And so if the protein looks dramatically differently, uh, different, it would have a different function. And then silent, no noticeable difference at all. The protein still works and it still is doing everything fine and dandy. So what are the point mutations? Here's a picture from online. Here's your original DNA, um, corresponds to amino acid leucine. So this is the codon charts. You don't have to memorize three letters and then MR, and, uh, mRNA and tRNA. You know, they, the ribosome reads these three letters at a time and builds an amino acid sequence through the process of translation. 
So you can see frame shift mutation, we've inserted um, a letter that could lead to disastrous results. Sound mutation still codes for leucine. You see how it doesn't change? The amino acid doesn't change, so the form wouldn't change. It'd be the same. Valine is a missense mutation. Uh, possibly could have a big change, possibly not. And then stop codon, well, of course, that would lead to drastic, dramatic changes, um, of course. So we, you know, nonsense would be very poor. Chromosome mutation, I'm going to go super quick through this because we already talked about it, but genetic material involving whole chromosomes. So we talked about this in meiosis, but you can lose a segment in deletion. You can translocate a segment from one to another. You can duplicate a segment, which, of course, would lead to protein, um, different amounts of protein. And then inversion, you can invert a segment of chromosomes. And chromosome mutations, here's a blank that so I want you to file for your nose packet, but they can be deletions, which is loss, duplications, which are breaks in different places and recombine with wrong partners. That's, that's of course, a problem. Um, I would pause and finish this. And then inversions and translocations. And I would pause and write that down as well. Just here's another picture. You can see the different types of chromosomal mutations. And so back to genetic mutations, DNA mutations. Spontaneous mutations occur with no outside influence. So this could lead, this could, where does this come from? It comes from possibly replication errors by DNA polymerase. So most are repaired, some possibly become permanent. We already talked about meiosis and the fact that there are errors sometimes there, non-disjunction, aneuploidy, um, problems with chromosome breakage and rejoining. Gene sequences can be disrupted um, just randomly, also can produce you know, those deletions and chromosome mutations that we already talked about. Induced mutations are caused by mutagens. Mutagens are chemicals that can alter nucleotide bases. Okay, so for example, um, benzopyrene adds a, adds a group to guanine, prevents base pairing. You can see here, uh, this is an induced mutation. Ooh, let me take this off. This is an induced mutation. Um, X-rays can induce mutations. UV radiation from sun or tanning lamps uh, is absorbed by thiamine, causing it to form covalent bonds with adjacent nucleotide. It disrupts DNA replication. So UV radiation has a very real effect on an organism's body. Uh, consequences of either mutation. So here's the original. We've changed. You can see here CG, GC. Let's change it. Newly replicated strands. We've we've adjusted it. And so this is a, a spontaneous and induced mutations. Each of the nitrogenous bases exists in both a common form and a rare form. And so when a base spontaneously switches it can pair with a different base. And so that is a problem you see here. C binds to A, that's a mutation. Um, this is just some links that I would have clicked on um, if we were doing this in class. But yeah, Monsanto and Roundup, I'm sure you're familiar with Roundup. Big news happened many, a couple years ago about like lawsuits and Roundup has been found to be cancerous and some people debate that and who knows, you know, the scientists are researching on both sides of the aisle on that. but. But yeah, I mean, that's an environmental mutagen for all accounts that I could find. And so many mutagens are naturally occurring. So for example, plants and fungi make many chemicals for defense. Radiation can be natural or human made. There are about 16,000 DNA damaging events per cell per day. I mean, look at the world we live in, right? 16,000 DNA damaging events per cell per day based on research. 80% are repaired. So again, cancer still is a rare thing. So mutations can have benefits. Uh, benefits provides the raw material for evolution. I would star that, you know, star this first one. So how do we get different organisms according to evolutionary theory and natural selection? We have to have a different code and that code comes from the form of mutations. Very hard from a Christian biblical perspective to, uh, to believe this since most mutations are neutral or uh, harmful to the organism, but nonetheless know that for the exam. Diversity may benefit the organism immediately. So for example, being able to roll with the punches life gives. Mutations in germline cells may cause an, uh, an advantage in the offspring, give, give the offspring an advantage. Mutations can be harmful. There's only loss of function or other DNA sequences needed for survival. So harmful mutations can be passed to offsprings, okay? Um, and only if it's in germline cells. And so that could lead to possibilities. So of course, we wanna minimize exposure to mutagens. Um, we want to minimize exposure to, you know, that benzopyrene that we talked about, coal tar, car exhaust, charbold foods, and cigarette smoke. Yeah, if you like smoke or grill your fish a lot, like that does increase your chances for cancer. 
And of course, public policy science leads to more information. Hopefully more information leads to more wisdom. Debatable on that. And then hopefully the people who, uh, at least in de democratic societies, the people who are voted by the majority make wise choices to help protect and also serve the people. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, this was all about mutations and 6.7 mutations got in with TMNT. I can't name them all right now. I was trying to name them all, but in my mind, but Raphael and Michelangelo, Donatello, and oh, what's the other one? Oh, I forgot. Anyways, hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching this video. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. God bless.